Hi, this is Tim Chandler, the product manager with Nectar Technology. We're here at NAM 2014. Um, I'm here to show you some of our, our new line of MIDI controllers. We introduced the Impact LX49 very recently in November. We're now following up with a 25 and 61 version and completing the range of an 88 note version. Um, the difference with Nectar is that we develop controllers and then integrate with software to a level where your workflow is improved 100%. Um, the only way that you can get the right workflow is to treat each store separately, develop an individual protocol, so we don't rely on wrappers, we don't rely on, on any kind of preset protocols like Huey or MCU. Everything we do we develop from scratch which gives you the ultimate workflow where you don't have to use a mouse, you don't have to look at a display and you don't have to, um, in many ways, you, you basically do your music production with just the keyboard. Um, quite a big claim but as you'll see in a minute when I introduce our integration with Bitwig Studio, it actually is really the case. So I was going to quickly talk about the Impact series. We'll start with the 25. The 25 note is a is 119 map, it's available in February. Has eight pads, eight in, eight eight uh, knobs. Velocity knobs. sensitive pads. Velocity sensitive pads. Yep. And um, the Nectar integration, um, so you can change tracks, patches. You can set your loop points in your song. You have undo, um, toggle click on and off, and then overdub record mode or replace. Um, so a lot of the stuff that you normally have to use the mouse for with the secondary transport controls down here you have a lot more control. You also have dedicated mixer and instrument controls. The instrument controls map into common instrument parameters but it's very quick and easy to reassign them on the fly with a feature we call grab mode which works with a lot of doors. Um, so you can basically just hold down shift and turn a control, uh, sorry, hold down shift, move controls on the display and then you turn the controls you want to map them to and it's done. Uh, grabbing controls off the display if you like. Um, so the 25, I said, was 119 map, uh, that's dollars, US dollars. Over here you see we have uh, the 61. The 61 is 199 map, US dollars. And the 49, the 49 key is, um, this is 159 map. And brand new for the show is the 88 key version. This is a semi-weighted keyboard, has all the integration and all the controls of the Impact LX series, but it also has um, layers and splits so you can transmit on up to three MIDI channels at the same time with different programs. Um, useful controls for a, 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 key, a Mac piano player and an 88 key. This is 299 map, under $300 for an 88 note semi-weighted controller with controls. Wow, that's Fantastic a deal. Clean price. Yeah. No worries. So I'm going to show some of the integration on the Panoramas, which is our flagship controller. And in particular, I want to show it with Bitwig, um, which is the hot uh, software out at the moment. It's due out in March the 26th. Nectar will be distributed in Bitwig in the UK and in the US. So um, it made sense really for us to make sure the integration is really, really tight. And that's what we've done here, as you can see. Now with the Panoramas, all of, this, all of the uh, graphics you see on the display comes from the software. So what you see here is Bitwig's mixer. You'll notice as I move the selected track, which is highlighted, uh, the, you control the level of the selected track, which is highlighted white. The motorized fader also moves. Now the motorized fader is 100 millimeter Alps fader. It's what you will find on a, on a you know, high-end mixing desk. Uh, it sends high-resolution MIDI, so not just the seven bits of MIDI, it sends high-resolution data, and it's touch sensitive, so it's great for doing automation you can get professional results um, on the selected channel. Now the selected channel is changeable with dedicated track buttons up and down and whichever you can see which, whichever channel I select that's where the keyboard's going. Now as a keyboard player that's what's important you know what you're playing at the time is all you really want to be concerned about and um, we kind of take that, 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 that principle a little bit further and these buttons down here always relate to that selected track. So for example if I press the sends button I'm going to have immediate control of sends 1 to 8 on whichever track I happen to be playing. You can see here as I flick between them it always updates to be 
uh, to relate to what I'm playing on the keys, um, which takes away the thought process of which channel is it I need to go into uh, to change my sounds. You know, all of that thought process um, is gone, and that means you can just concentrate on getting your sounds right and making your music. Um, so, the Bitwig also has um, has macro controls. You can see here, if I bring up the macros, I have the patch name in here, and as I change the different patches, it gives it gives me. Um, it, the, the big patch name in the display. If I hold down the patch buttons, I can. If I know which patch I want, I can. I can. I, I can move it in the, the data encoder. So it's just a bit quicker to get there rather than having to step through all the time. Um, and then finally, there's also user controls. User controls are eight assignable global controls, if you like, that you can have alongside the mixer. Um, it's pretty easy to assign. You can assign any track. They're not track dependent in this case. Um, you literally just learn the control assignment and then move the, move the encoder. Uh, a lot of people have seen the Panorama integration with Cubase and Reason as, uh, as there's many videos on Sonic State already. Um, but what they won't have seen is the way that we have dealt with Bitwig's launcher. Um, so these further buttons here, clips and scenes, relate to Bitwig's launcher. If I press the clips button, it shows me the 12 clip, first 12 clips on the selected track that I'm playing. So down here we have, um, we have a, a, a drum track, as you can see. So, um, the nice thing about Bitwig is it doesn't just give me indicators for clip content. The yellow shows me that there's an active clip um, available. Green means it's ready for playback. Red means there's, it's ready to record or it is recording, um, which I'll show in a bit. But what's nice is you actually have clip names as well. And um, you can see here, if I hit this, I know I'm going to get the bass drum. I'm just gonna, if I solo that out, you can hear exactly what's going on. And I, can, I know I'm going to bring the main beat in, maybe do a fill, back to the main beat. So it's very clear and concise. And unlike a lot of those grid controllers with the flashing lights, you know, um, you actually know what, what, the, what the clip is going to do when you hit it. You know, this feedback is invaluable. Um, it really is. So as far as actually recording new clips goes, um, I, I can turn the click track on and I can maybe start doing something now. If I wanted to record some drums, I just have to trigger an empty clip. Okay. So it's really quick and easy to build up a few different styles, different beats. Um, but again, sometimes if you're recording immediately like that, sometimes you, you're kind of like in the heat of the moment, you forget what you were going to do, and then maybe you've missed the bar. Um, and the low Bitwick has um, loop quantization so that it, it always comes in with a bar and stays on the beat. Um, you can end up with like a bar of silence sometimes at the start of your clip, which means then you then have to go in and edit it in the software. What you can do with the panorama is you can actually say, well, you know what, I want to record a two bar clip. And then you can add a two bar clip that's empty and then record to it that way. So for example, I'm just going to do that now. I'm going to put a two bar clip onto um, clip nine on my track for drums. What you do is you set the new clip length with the data encoder like so. And then rather than triggering it directly by hitting the pad, I hold shift and hit the pad instead. That gives me my two bar clip. Hit the pad to start playback. And then Record normally would, would be the record for the, uh, the arranger, the linear arranger, but if I use shift, it's the overdub record for the launcher. And I've got a definite two bar loop going on, and I had time to think about what I was doing. Of course, you notice at the moment I've been triggering uh, drum samples with the keys. It's quite easy to, uh, to do it with the pads if you prefer that. You just press the pads button, that takes it out of clip mode. So you know, again, I'm building up clip, I'm building up different grooves on the fly, and I'm doing it all from the controller. I'm not really having to look at the display or anything like that. Everything I need is here. Once you've recorded your clips, going back into Bitwig, um, you can name them, not from the controller. We haven't quite managed that bit yet. But um, once you've recorded your clips, you can let's see. Let's go down to see where we are. Go down to the clip that you recorded, hit that, and then give it a name, drum. And then it appears on the display as well immediately. So, you know, record your clips, build them up, 
and everything. You just lay out diff different grooves on the display so you can sample and have a little play uh, with, uh, with what you've done. And then after that, another way of working in Bitwig, if I bring up the arranger, you can see that um, what I can do now, if I hit record on the, on the, on the linear arrangement, It's recording my, uh, my performance, my playback from the clips in a linear fashion. So it's like you can audition stuff in, uh, in the clip, in the, in using your clips here, and then record a performance back in, in as a linear performance as well. Which I don't know about you, but for me, I've got so many four bar loops uh, in, in different linear doors because half the time I get, I get bored and I can't be bothered to do the next part and the next part. But this way, you know, you, you can use clips, you can do loops of different lengths as well, and then you can audition how those loops might go together and then put them into a linear recording. So there's lots and lots of, um, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a great workflow it's, uh, with, with the clip triggering, and you can see that with a panorama kind of brings that to life and makes it very clear about what's going on. Um, instruments in Bitwig, um, in instrument mode, you, you basically control the devices within the selected track. If I go to a uh, something with a polysim, for example, let's go to something with. Uh, let's try and get a patch going on. So, oh, you know what I did? I put it on solo, didn't I? So let me uh, let me just turn turn that solo off. There we go. Um, so here we have uh, we have a we have a um, a patch very clear patch name and if, if I change the patch again scroll through so the, the controls map to um, eight common controls on my on, on the Bitwig synth um, if I press the page button you can see I have useful menus to get to specific pages of controls I can go to the filters go to the oscillators start start tweaking the changes will all happen in real time So, you know, this, is, this makes it great to, to kind of really play and mess around with sounds and come up with some ideas that you probably wouldn't do if you were just using a mouse, you know, because you've got these, all of the controls to hand and you can really just come up with something a little bit unique. Um, all the devices in a chain, if I press the view button, you can see the instrument try. This is what we're currently recording. But there's lots and lots of, uh, 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 in this particular instrument track, there's, there's lots and lots of devices. But um, from, you can get to all of them from the panorama. By you turning the data encoder, it changes, it changes my device and tells me what's going on here. And you can see that all of the different controls are available for the different devices. So I can start playing with some reverb. I can go back, you can turn the devices on and off so you can audition what it's like with and without your effects. Um, so it's very quick and easy um, that to, to kind of build up like a, a sound, a particular sound with multiple effects, not just with the synth alone, but with multiple effects at one go. Um, finally, transport mode. In transport mode, you have the, um, you have the loop position down here. You have uh, the ability to change the loop position as well. You can see it changing here. This is the song position changing the tempo, it's also possible. Control of pre-roll, um, these are the groove controls in Bitwig, shuffling, turning the groove on and off. Um, there's a step sequencer that we haven't implemented yet, but it will happen by release. <laughs> um, you just have to trust me on that one. Auto punch on and off, quantize after you're recording, it wasn't quite right, you can quantize. Uh, and then turning your automation right on and off. With this on, anything you do with these controls on the instrument or on your device is going to be recorded along with the, the clip or, uh, with, or with the, um, the loop that you're recording in the arranger as well. So there's a lot of stuff you can do and the Panorama has control of it all. So as you can see, the real difference with Nectar is the integration and the workflow that comes from that integration is second to none. It speeds up your music production, it removes any of those niggling things about which track am I supposed to be on, I don't know which sends I have to adjust, I don't know how to set my loop points, I have to use the mouse, all this and that. It just lets you focus on making music, which is at the end of the day what we all want to do. <laughs> so you've obviously been working with the Bitwig guys for quite a while, how long has that process taken? 
Uh, well, Klaus and I um, initially discussed uh, the API and um, I talked about um, some of the problems I've had with uh, different SDKs I've worked with in the past. I've done a lot of work with integration through SDKs for different software. Um, and Klaus came up with a great idea, a great way of doing it in his API, and I think they've done a really good job. Here and there, when we wanted a little bit more, um, a little bit more functionality, I've, I've been able to talk to Klaus, and he's very quickly implemented it. Um, in fact, he used the Panorama P4. He's been using it for uh, since since really the API was developed. He was using the P4 as a kind of bench to to build it from because it's got all of the bells and whistles. It's got this display, um, and that's why it's so functional. And um, then I basically I, I, I took it over, and from a Nectar perspective, we always prefer to have control over the, the integration ourselves, um, just because we can spend that little bit longer than a software company might might want to themselves. We can really focus on detail, um, and it's the detail that goes into these products that makes them really stand out from from um, the competition.